a CBC Color presentation. Hello there, snowflakes. Welcome to, what do we call this, the lodge? <laughs> uh, we're going to change it up a little today. We're going to do a little uh, review slash opinion on the movie, A Matter of Winning. Gene, maybe you want to break down, give us a brief uh, synopsis on uh, this movie? Sure, it's a snowmobile movie, <laughs> in, the, in the broadest of terms, oh. which at any point I was certain was going to turn into a 70s porn. Mm -hmm. It, uh, 100%. It's, yeah, it's a very, very gritty, uh, gripping tale of a snowmobile racer who uh, doesn't quite achieve his dreams. Manages to escape with his life. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Barely. I mean, as I started watching this film, I kind of got the feeling that this was meant to be a documentary. It, yeah, had, it sort of had that feel, and I, I looked at the beginning, there wasn't a word said, really, as far as dialogue, for a full eight minutes in the which is probably the best part of this entire movie. Less talking, more old sleds, uh, ridiculous yep. outfits, old drunk old <laughs> yeah. stumble up, <laughs> stumble up snow pants. <laughs> you're, you're not kidding. Like, it, it, watching this film was really like I never attended any sled races as a kid, other than just you know racing around with me and my buddies. But like, but like, I, and I never even heard of such things on a legit sled race. I it was something at all, but I guess this was a big thing. And at one point, the guy said there were like ten thousand people at this at this race. Well, how are you involved in the racing? I'm I'm just studying it, and I don't know too much about it, but I, I want to learn about it and observe it and uh, see what it's all about. That's great. It, it, there must be something going on with 10,000 people up here today and almost as many machines. I don't know exactly where it was recorded. There is, although there are some shots that are at, um, it's a national park. Yellowstone. Prince Albert. <laughs> Yellowstone National Park, <laughs> Prince Albert. Yeah, in a can. <laughs> <laughs> But again, like I was taken back to that time. Like this is clearly in the '70s, right? I would, I would think so. The, uh, it looks like early the war '70s. They always. I don't know what year. Well, there's an awful lot of Polaris TXs racing around with those numbers on the side that say, "Is it four plus two or two plus?" You have to do a little math with those sleds. <laughs> so I don't know what those numbers mean. <laughs> Anyhow, there's a lot of those TXs, and I think those are like a 72, 73 kind of deal. But I really take it back with the, the style of clothing and the amount of booze that they're drinking while they're in the pits. And at one point, there's this old lady sitting there, I, I assume next to her husband or, or whoever she set her sights on at that point. As a paper bag with a rum ball sticking out. <laughs> and I, don't think she, nice. I don't think she realizes she's on camera. <laughs> and then there's another guy who's like trying to hide it and he's you know, pulling out all his jacket. You know, trying to hide it like this. And I, again, I don't think he realized there was a camera on him. And that's where I get the feeling that it's kind of documentary style until it isn't. How do you take. I guess I'm confused as to how this movie morphed into this pseudo-action thriller, uh, which was really <laughs> lacking. There's plenty of cool racing. That's, that's to be sure. Like, I'm not a big race guy, but they did get some great shots. 
and clear. It's like, it's not a lot of fuzzy shit that you can't watch. There's some pretty cool white boats and crashes, guys going over hay bales, and at one point there's some... Now, I don't know if this was meant to be real. Like, it, I, and I guess meaning, like, was it shot as real, or was it just this supreme, supremely shitty acting? Either or. This woman going, why? Why? Oh my god, look at this exactly what's going on there. Yeah, there goes two I more. I knew it. it I like just knew something would happen. Oh, Into the hay bales, and he was followed in there by Bob Sellers. Why? 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 I don't know that it's even an ambulance. It's just some guy's suburban. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. I think I think this was like a documentary being made. That's real racing. That's just how it was back in the seventies. Well, there is definitely some real racing going on there. But then they get this love story happening. Yeah, that was, which is that was the full promise. That's where you just, <sighs> that's where you just snuggle on the couch. You get your blankie there. I mean, hot cup, hot cup of hot rum. And, there are some acting. You, know, you used to see it late on a Saturday night yep. watching public access. Oh, yeah. I hope that that movie would turn into something else. It's Show a little bit of sound. CBC French? After the May. French is too fuzzy. <laughs> too fuzzy. Look at you. You're right, though. Late at night on the CBC, they definitely went up their game as far as like. Put it on a little bit of risky, oh, yeah. kind of kind of movies. This is CBC. Uh, just as an aside, who the hell picked this beer up? Um, this was on sale, and if you know me, I love to buy on sale things. Well, it says refreshed brew house, refreshingly yep. honest. Yep. And in that spirit, this is it's shitty. honestly shitty. Oh, <laughs> oh, hell, this just bad. takes me back to oh. Oh, what year did Die Hard come out? 80, uh, oh crap, 88, 89. They're about something. something yeah. In the early 90s, the bad guy from Die Hard. <laughs> with the long hair, did a black ice commercial for black ice beer. Remember, every beer company had those ice beers. Oh yeah. And they were god awful. Yeah. We drank fun. them because they were loaded with uh, alcohol. With alcohol. Yeah. Like, like these are 6%. Didn't some of them get to like seven? Yeah, yeah. I think they were like yeah. seven and a half yeah. back in the day. And uh, like, I know you guys in the States, I mean, you can't, I know. You can't handle that kind of Three, thing. four kind of percent, maybe. But yeah. No, they want light. Oh, light? Oh, yes. <laughs> Less cards. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> uh, uh, oh, you lightweights. <laughs> there goes our fingers. Yeah, well, like, like, oopsies. <laughs> Who cares what we're doing anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this tastes terrible. It is. It's awful. It can't stop drinking. It's the taste of memories. So where are we? Yeah. Oh, we're yeah. talking about the love story. Now this girl who played, she came from San Francisco as a writer for a woman's magazine to write about snowmobile racing. And, I, and he says that right in the movie, he's like, why do, you, why do women in San Francisco care about us racing? And she kind of blows that off and says something. Well, I'm with the Women's Magazine in San Francisco, and we're doing a special feature article on uh, snowmobile racing this season. What do women in San Francisco want to know about snowmobiles? Oh, well, we'd like to broaden our horizons a little bit and find out about what's going on outside of San Francisco. If they're women, I'd think they'd be more interested in powder puffs. The star went by the name Gordon Schaefer, and he plays himself in the movie. Now, I think she... I don't remember what her name was, but she had a fictional name, which is where I... That's where it was like, like a documentary. Like most movies. Like clearly this guy, <laughs> this guy wasn't an actor, I don't think. Like I'm wondering, was he a legit racer? Because he is up on that machine. He didn't seem to know what he was doing. And... Yeah, maybe he just did like, research, like every other actor around him, new research and... Like he, maybe he followed a uh, like full on method, like he, he maybe, went on the racing circuit yeah. for eight years. And he said, call me by this name, I'm going to change my name, this is my name now, and he did 
Did My name's Gordon Schaefer. Yeah, my Gordon Schaefer. Not only... <laughs> <laughs> to get that giant just, baby. Just get that baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gordon Schaefer in a matter of me. <laughs> oh, shit. Actors do it. You never know. Oh, uh, my guess is you got made sandwiches for this one. Well, you know, back in the 70s, bologna was... <laughs> Top notch. Again, the acting is not exactly <laughs> the baloney. <laughs> it's not yeah. a lot of uh, The acting was not top shelf, but the purpose of the story, like, I don't even really was there a story. I guess there is more of a story than that other slip movie. Do you, you know which one I'm talking about? I can't remember the name, I hope, which I think I know. It ain't easy. It ain't, it ain't easy. Slash Winnipeg Run slash Into the Storm slash a Giant Piece of Shit. <laughs> <laughs> there was, isn't that the one weird, like, you know, wasn't the one with the famous animal fight? Which one was that movie? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was, was uh, It Ain't Easy, where he's yeah. beating up that kind of movie. Yeah. And that was like, you know, like, there's new movies now, like Ravenous or whatever. But that, back then, Ravenous is not a new movie. Ah! Oh, 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 yeah. that's, <laughs> that's the older one. What's the newer one? There's a newer, there's the Ravenous 2, oh. even still on. What's the Leonardo DiCaprio where he fights the bear? Ah! Oh, uh. Revenant. 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 <laughs> it's with an R, same thing. <laughs> anyway, it's like that, but you know, back in the 70s, it was really good. That part was, everything else was. Anyway, back to this movie story, right? matter of winning. <laughs> it was, uh, out of, now there aren't a lot of, like, sled-related feature film movies. There's a few. This one I probably put first, I think. Because it does have sort of the story. The love interest is pretty weak. Well, the whole story is pretty weak, but at least it's got a beginning, a middle, and uh, it does get a little mystical in the third act, where he's like wandering through the snow, uh, having visions about racing and dreaming about his girl. I really liked all the racing, like, you know, there's the love story and all the in-between, like the act three, like you said, and stuff, but all the racing, like you said, I think this was a documentary, and they're like, wow, we gotta do more than that, let's put a love story into it. But all the racing, I like, I enjoyed watching that. All the old sleds that used to be back in the day, that was fun. You're right, and there was quite like the, the racing scenes were pretty cool. What I didn't notice is these guys were not afraid to hammer the shit out of these sleds. They're pounding them. They hit like they hit drifts and launch these things ten feet in the air, turn them sideways. And what like it's amazing they never ran into a caramel. But you're right, that launch where he launches it off at the side of the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then they slow mo it, and it's like a full on yard sale of that thing just going over and over and over. What I thought. And was, then he started it. <laughs> well, you can see his pipe come off. He had a little, like, two gallon gas can kind of tied on the back with some rope. And that thing I don't know, managed to stay on that sled all the way down to the bottom. But you're right, he did manage to get started again. But then. <laughs> Again, here's where the story comes in, and he's down there, and all he's got is like a three musketeers and half a book of matches. And, I, the, and at that point, I'm like, why doesn't he just light a fire? I would lit the sled off. He ends up staying. We jumped out of that happened? I Santa and uh, son of a bitch. Oh, 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 they say you shouldn't stray away from where you are, right? That's fair. The first thing he did was try to fire that thing up and take off. And then, he's, then he rolled it again. <laughs> and, and it rolled on his head, and then he's completely out. And then they had to airlift him out of there. Probably the funniest moment, and it was unintentionally funny, is when he takes the, the love interest, because I can't remember her name for a ride on the sled, on his sled. And he doesn't take her out on a trail ride. He, he loads her up with his team and hammers it. And there's a difference <laughs> between acting and reality. And 
as he comes screaming by the camera, you can see this woman screaming out of fear in his ear. <laughs> and that is not acting. I guarantee she was really angry. Yeah. And then when they stop, they get off the sled. She looks pretty pissed. And, and I also guarantee that that was not happening. <laughs> and you can yeah. see the smirk on his face. But they only had one take and they had to use it. Yeah. Here's to you, Gordon Schaefer. <laughs> <laughs> For getting that shot. <laughs> oh, she looks so angry. But in the end, it kind of comes together into a watchable film. I wish they had had a St. Bernard with a Grammy cast. <gasps> What was that dog's name? George. 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 Huh? <laughs> Him and Zsa Zsa Gabor. Right? Isn't it Zsa Zsa Gabor? I remember the show. I don't remember the actors. that dog George in the mountains? Yeah. 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 I think it was Zsa Zsa Gabor. Isn't it true that show? I don't remember what that dog did other than... I remember Rick. seeing him on TV and he was really lovable looking and I'd sit and watch him. He was just a dog that brought people hot whiskey. Well, I don't think he actually had that little tank on his neck. Yeah. I wish he did. <laughs> <laughs> Get one for Gene. <laughs> on his alpine. Cheer. <laughs> <laughs> a little tank. Helmet with ears. <laughs> In the end, he goes, with, he says, well, he never, they never actually say what happens with him and the girl, but it shows him racing and he's sled. <laughs> she, she's not to be seen. <laughs> so you made it was fine. So I gave it a stuff. I liked it for a watch. I wouldn't rewatch it, but yeah, I didn't mind it. It was fun. It was funny. Like it was good memories, man. Like you guys know more so in the seventies than me because I was born late in the seventies. But uh, yeah, it'd be a fun time. That's what movies are for. Escape. Oh. Sure, the seventies are great. Yeah. Cubic lice. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he said I was going dark. He's going nasty. <laughs> I guess that did run rampant in the seventies, but it did. <laughs> 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 